This is Daniel Wright with ProLine. Hope you're doing well this morning. Just wanted to give you a call and let you know I'm heading your way for our 10 o'clock appointment uh, to take a look at these asphalt repairs at your community. Uh, GPS is showing us to be there just a few minutes before 10 o'clock, so I will see you here in about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions before I get there, feel free to give me a call back here on my cell phone, 704-712-5701. Uh, Thanks. I've always said that I like Mondays. Like everybody likes to, com or a lot of people like to complain about Mondays. And I feel like Mondays I always wake up with the most energy, the most excitement. Like, and I, I feel like it's because like you're coming off the weekend where you've gotten time to reset, relax, do some stuff that you enjoy. So you've kind of like got that like endorphin release for the weekend, and so it carries into that Monday morning. And then you get to carry that into like how your week starts. I always struggle with Tuesdays, and I don't know why. I think it's just because you're running off like a high on Monday, and then Tuesday it's like, oh crap, like, this is the work week. Like, I got to dial in. I'm tired. But I don't know. I just always like Mondays. They're, uh, they're just Monday fun. fun day. Yeah, Monday fun day. And, it's how, and I think too is because it's how you set the week. Like you're setting the tone for the week. So a lot of people want to go in and gripe about Mondays. Well, you're setting the tone for your week. You know, and those are also the same people who end up at, you know, Taco Tuesdays and you know Wing Wednesdays, Thirsty Thursdays. You know, they start the weekend pretty much Thursday night. So Friday doesn't really count. And typically, they're the people who, you know, they're the ones that gripe and complain about their job, their life. They're not where they want to be. So, all about how you look at your uh, the beginning of your uh, of your week, I think, is what really affects the rest of your week. So, really, all of this, as you get out and walk around, like that's starting to fail right there. All this is kind of starting to fail. And then everything down to that crater is all going to be falling apart. And I'm sure that some people like to say, hey, let's just fix this area now. But if if we already have to mobilize our entire crew to come here to fix that and then can get all this and then set them up for the next, you know, what, 20 years to have it all fixed and done right, then it's kind of a win-win for everyone. But basically what it is, this HOA, this community here has been dealing with this big crater for, for a long time, about a couple of years, it sounds like. One of the questions I like to ask is, well, why wasn't it as important for the last couple of years and it's all of a sudden important? And fortunately, we were working with a, an open and upfront client. They said, well, we were trying to get funds in place to be able to pay for this. Great. I just want people to be honest, right? Because if you aren't honest with me, then I can't help fix your problem. So they said that they finally did get funds over the last couple of years to be able to put towards this, which is fantastic. Um, and then I sit and look at it. It's like, okay, well, we're gonna be paying for all of our crews to come out here, the equipment, the pavers, the rollers, the trucks, all that stuff. The area outside of your crater is all falling apart as well. It's just not causing that immediate complaint because when you hit that crater, that's all you're thinking about. So I said, what we can do is we can give you a couple of options. Yeah, I have no idea what the amount of funds are that's available for the, comp or for the, the HOA, but we'll give options. So that way it says, look, for an extra X dollars amount more, we can get the other asphalt repaired that's falling apart right next to the crater as opposed to having to pay to have the crew mobilized, you know, next year, and it ends up costing twice as much. You know, like I told the client that we met with, you know, I've been doing this eight years and the prices haven't gone down in eight years by any means. So you either pay for it now or pay more for it later. And so that's why we like to, you know, on the maps here, we like to iron out different options. So that way they have the main asphalt repair, the optional four inch repair, and then the catch basin repair for uh, putting a concrete collar around it. So. We just like to be as clear and transparent as possible. Uh, I'd like to, I like to lay a lot of options out on the table, but not all of the options, because too many options create paralysis by analysis. So we want to give them a couple things to look at, a few things to discuss, and ultimately make sure that we help solve their problem. That's what we do. So once we get all the measurements, the pictures, all that stuff, get back in here, we save it to the iPad, so that way we can have it ready to go in a file once I get back to the office or on Wi-Fi it goes faster so I just compress everything down so it attaches to the email better and then put all the numbers together so that's really what we do here then once I do that you guessed it 
check Basecamp notifications. Heading to Mainline Boulevard in Charlotte. Looking at a seal coating, crack sealing, and striping project. Uh, this is for a repeat client, and they are budgeting for 2025. I forget what the title of the book is, but the other one, or uh, another book that this same guy wrote, was recommended by Brian Beckner from uh, TCS. And the one Brian recommended was like how to like lead a sales team, how to manage a sales team, or how to be a sales manager or something. But we don't really have much of a sales team right now, so I was looking through this guy's books, and he wrote one on basically like how to just build a sales team, like how to build a sales role and whatever it is. And I'm about halfway through it right now. And I was telling Kelsey the other day, I was like, I don't like, I've never been one that likes sales. You know, I enjoy talking to people and fixing problems and whatever, which experienced salespeople say, well, like, that is sales, is figuring out what the problem is, talking to people and fixing it for them. But um, with reading this book, I'm like, man, I'm kind of excited. Like, this sounds kind of fun. Like the, the way that they're doing stuff. And it's also reassuring because a lot of the stuff that I'm reading, like we already are doing as a company from a sales standpoint, asking the probing questions, you know, trying to really figure out what the problem is, like why they called us as opposed to just throwing all of our solutions at them that we have no idea if it'll fix their problem, you know? So it goes back to kind of one of the golden rules that I always preach and because I've been taught it is seek first to understand and then be understood, right? Like no client actually cares what all you can do for them if you don't actually take a minute to listen to what their problem is, like figure out what the issue is that they need solved. And then once you confirm that, then you can propose your solutions. Or if you even don't have a solution, you can propose a recommendation or a referral. So that's what, uh, you know, that's stuff I've been taught and I, we just have been doing it for the last several years and it tends to work out pretty well. There we go. Guess I just had to hit it harder community like sometimes you can get um like google street view can like go through some of these places and so you can literally like do a street walk to get some of the quantities if you can't see them on an aerial view but with this being a private community and being gated there's no uh street views on anything you know i always try to teach estimators and stuff to like when you get to a site look at your aerial map you're using for your quoting and then look at your site because right now i can look at the aerial map and i can tell I can't see all these reserved markings that are along the edges from the aerial map. So therefore, while I'm here, it makes sense for me to get uh, get numbers on those. The munchies. <laughs> I heard that story. <laughs> I did, man. I got out of that place, and it was like in a, in a neighborhood up in Mooresville. And I got out, and these dogs started barking at me from the fence. I was like, oh, look at the munchies. And I'm like, who the heck am I? Calling these random ass dogs munchies because Kelsey calls Finn munchies. Yeah, from Kelsey. Yeah. They say things from your spouse rub off on you. I guess it's true. Some people may not care about this stuff, but one of my absolute pet peeves is when someone comes through and you blacked out. Like what happened is there was another reserve marking, probably smaller than this, underneath here. So the last time somebody painted this, their stencil was bigger. So they only blacked out what was here previously. So now you got the R hanging out outside of the black box and part of that D. And I just think it looks sloppy as crap. So what we do is if this was our reserve stencil right here, we lay that down and we outline it, whether it's with tape or chalk or something. And then we paint that entire area black. So that way when we paint the white reserved on it, all the white letters are on top of the black box background and it gives like a clean look to everything it's also good to get pictures of the the areas like all these garages that you're working up against just because for the crew you know part of their process is they review this scope so this map that i'm making with all the pictures i'm adding to it so that way they know going into it like oh crap we got to cut in around all this brick and all the garages so that way they can at least prepare from a planning standpoint, a manpower standpoint, tools, equipment, things like that. I try to get as many pictures as possible. The guys, uh, I found out from Brandon that the guys like it when they when he does site visits because he takes more pictures than I do. They like to scroll through all the pictures that we take and see what uh, who's got the best ones. So apparently there's a little game about it. There's times where it's easy to just like use a, an aerial view to quote the property, get them a seal coating and striping number. But like there's over 40 something reserve stencils that we would have never known about or accounted for or like the no parking stuff that's under the trees. You know, we always tell people it may take us a little bit longer to get you an estimate back, but it's going to be a comprehensive estimate. There's not going to be like the change orders on the back end of, oh, we didn't know there was 
40 reserve stencils to paint. Like we take the time to make sure it's right the first time. A lot of people, they give a quote and then they ask, you know, I've, I've actually had customers ask is, you know, is, is this like all in pricing or what's going to change when you come to do it? I'm like, no, like this is the price to do it. The only time that we ever have something that changes is if the customer changes the scope, you know, so that'd be a change order. Or if we're doing like repairs and stuff and we take off the top layer of asphalt and then we find out that there's like an underlying problem, whether it's like a utility problem, uh, bad base, anything like that. That's the only time that we really can, you know, get change orders out of stuff. Otherwise it's the price you get, it's the price you pay. And that's just how it goes. Put all the numbers together. I'll go back through and like, it's called holes on this map is where you take out like any of the land areas, like all the buildings or islands and stuff. So that way it gives us an accurate total square footage of the asphalt. So since we're doing the seal coating uh, proposal, we need to know exactly how many square feet of asphalt is being sealed. And that's how we calculate our materials, our time, everything like that. We're on the edge here. You can see there's a lip of asphalt. So sometimes that means that they've overlaid this in the past. And so since we're out here looking at possible repaving options, it gives me a better idea of what's actually possibly underneath this. If it may just be two inches of asphalt, it might be four, like if they put in two originally and put in another inch and a half or two on top of it. So trying to look for signs like that uh, helps us better be able to scope the projects. All of these areas along here is where obviously all the cars pull in. So they're dripping oil and fuel and things like that that come out of it. So obviously it eats away all of the asphalt. What some places are doing that have a lot of just come and go traffic like that and at places or facilities where there's a lot of cars that might come in that are leaking and things like that. Sometimes they go to and just put in all uh, concrete for this area. You see it a lot at like auto repair stores like Auto Zones or O'Reilly's where maybe the first like six or seven feet off of the sidewalk is all concrete because that takes a lot longer to erode away from the oils and the fuels that leak on it than the asphalt does. So for this right here, when we're out here assessing for the paving, like we would want to make sure that we're, pay we're taken off as you know, enough inches. So, you know, about a two inch milling pave would come down here and take off that, all of that damaged asphalt. So that way when we go back and put it on, it's going to have a strong base underneath it and it doesn't just start falling in like, it, like you can see right here. So as you guys heard me probably talking about earlier, I was talking about how the stenciling, you know, the previous people at the other place we were at, they had just covered up what was there previously and then painted their stencil on top of it. Well, ironically enough, we did this parking lot not too long ago. Uh, we did all the striping here. Now they're having us back out looking at possible repaving and planning for that. But as you can see on here, the gray box that we covered up the old stuff with is outside of all of our letters. So this gives it just a nice clean look that the wording is actually inside of the box that we covered up the old markings with. Some people might sit and ask, well, what if you, it was you who did it last time, why didn't you just have the exact same stencil as well? We order new stencils, new things come in, and not every stencil is created exactly the same. And so we make sure that if it's not a perfect match, a perfect lineup, that we cover up what's there and put the, put the new one on top of it. On this edge here, there's like two separate layers. So this parking lot has been overlaid a couple of times. If they just pave this you know, maybe two or three years ago where someone came in and did an edge mill and an overlay where basically it's where you edge out, you mill out about 18 inches from the edge of all the concrete, curb and gutter, sidewalks, things like that. So that way when you put the overlay of the asphalt on top of it, it can kind of transition down and be a smooth transition. It's such a, a small amount of difference in height though, like you don't really feel it if you're walking or driving on it, but it gives it that smooth edge. And so the edge mill and overlay is that's that mill so that way the asphalt you know, uh, smoothly transitions and then all the overlay is where you just literally put new asphalt overlaid on top of the old asphalt. What ends up happening then is I always tell people, you know, that's maybe a, a good three to five year fix because what's gonna happen is you're gonna have reflective cracking and that's where the, the cracks that were in that, in that asphalt before you overlaid it are gonna start showing through because that's obviously a weak point in the pavement and so that new asphalt is going to start breaking and getting weak in those exact same areas. Where we're at is the Charlotte airport and we're down in the valet area and what they're doing is a whole expansion project. So like this whole wall behind me here, they're going to be turning this into a whole new office, a greeting area for the valet clients. And then this area out here that we're working on, you can see a lot of these lines where we've removed existing pavement markings. Uh, the guys just started out here this morning 
and that's what I was talking about earlier that we got the new drum the new uh, piece that goes on our grinder and so it's designed to be way more efficient give a way cleaner look a cleaner finish than what we had before and truthfully I mean it's only 115 that we're out here and I think the guys got started probably around 8 30 or 9 and what they've already been able to get removed from what I can see because I didn't even walk all the way down there yet uh, looks like it's definitely moving along a lot faster than our old drum that we had what they're ultimately doing is having to get all the pavement markings removed. Then another contractor is going to be coming in and doing essentially like an epoxy coating of sorts. And um, this is all going to be all nice and fresh. And then we'll come and this, is, this whole section is going to be a big crosswalk. So that way it's got a safe area for pedestrians to walk after they drop their car off. And then uh, all this out here will just be drive through. So it's, uh, it's a pretty big project. I think it's, it's like a six month upfit. But all this removal I had to get done first, so that way the flooring folks could come in and start doing their part. So it's just a, it's a big old freaking, I don't even know what you want to call it. It's a lot to go into it, for sure. Now you're, you're saying you're going to put a paint machine in the back of your truck? Yeah. To paint the crosswalk? Yeah. We'll strap it in. Yeah. And then that way we can drive the truck in here, just pull the gun off. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna build out some stencils either late tonight or early tomorrow where we can just put the stencil down. Just... Here is when we're done to get linear feet of like and start tracking how long this drum actually lasts us. Like a usage report on how much we removed. I, I think it's good. I mean, you gotta think every one of these lines you've removed is equivalent to a parking stall or a little, maybe even a little longer than. So if you're kind of gauging your time for the rest of these, Made. We're on the laws of hatching speed plus the arrow, so, yeah. so we got it. We got it. We got a good bit done today. Yeah. Painted this place, this ABC store, several years ago. Pulled up in here, around the back, to park our truck and trailer. It was me and one other guy, and there was two cars parked in the back here. It was like middle of the night, like 2 a.m. or something, and. We pulled up, one car had its trunk open, and there were two guys talking over the back of the trunk. And we kind of just stayed in the truck for a minute, minding our own business. And both of them looked at us, they shut the trunk, and both cars left. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. I mean, I guess maybe somebody had like, you know, had finished baking their cookies or something and was delivering them to their friend. But it was a very, uh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. it was a very odd situation and we, needless to say, got in and out of here pretty quick. You can kind of look over here along these edges. Like, so this, this looks like there's probably some sort of a layer of asphalt underneath here. So that's asphalt right there and that's asphalt on top of it. So this has probably every bit of four inches of asphalt on it, on this whole parking lot. So then when we're sitting here doing these proposals and, and scoping these jobs, if we just do a two inch milling pave, well, that's great, but you're gonna to get to the original asphalt. Well, there's a reason that they covered up the original asphalt. So then you have to sit and look at, okay, what's, what does the client want? Are they looking for a long-term fix to do this properly and to take out everything that was there, go back to the base and put in new asphalt? Or are they just wanting another five year fix where we just come in and we do the exact same thing and just keep putting new and new asphalt on top of it? It's, it's ultimately up to the client, what they wanna pay for and, and how long they want it to last. Three hours later. Quick. It's a rapid fire finish to the day at the office. I didn't get back there till I think around three o'clock or so is what time we got back there. And then had to have a meeting in the office. And here we are at six o'clock leaving the office. So that's how we're wrapping up today. Uh, obviously, the meeting I had today ran longer than I expected. So, therefore, all of the site visit stuff that I did earlier, I'll probably either do. Kind of later this evening or tomorrow uh, just as far as getting like all the administrative side cleaned up like all the notes put in the numbers put together so on and so forth so that'll get done either later tonight or tomorrow and then uh, tomorrow we are doing these pickleball courts that we've been kind of working on in phases for the last couple of weeks um, we've got the fencing going in tomorrow so that is pretty exciting we uh, again like we kind of know that we haven't done the pickleball courts before so this is a new venture for us. Uh, meeting the fencing crew out there tomorrow morning. 
make sure we're all on the same page, get them rocking and rolling, and we should have some six foot tall fencing put up probably within the next day or two. So that's what we got tomorrow. From a pickleball standpoint, we are got a crew back down at the airport tomorrow, doing more of the grinding work, um, grinding and striping installation for the valet area, as well as another crew going out and knocking out a new installation for a Valvoline oil change facility. So it's a new one that's getting built and they're gonna be knocking out the pavement markings and I think signage for that one. So that's what we got coming tomorrow.